Hi, my name is Peter Ovi, and I search for personal behavior biometrics with the aim to replace intrusive traditional authentication methods. I'm going to show you how to personalize touch-based behavior profiles without sacrificing performance. We found that some users can be accurately modeled by selecting only three key metrics from their touch input. Before we start, let's have a look at the problem domain. In this example, two users are transferring files or texting each other using an app which supports end-to-end -end encryption. The encryption secures the data between the two users, but unfortunately it cannot guarantee the authenticity of the true user. Instead, to understand who is using a device, we need to apply authentication methods to establish, establish trust in the end user. Let's have a look at these traditional methods. In this first category, we have knowledge-based methods, and they include passwords, PIN numbers, and cue points. These are often fairly simple, since we as humans are unable to remember longer and more sophisticated passwords. So to combat, the, combat this, we use a second factor to improve the strength of the first. And a second factor is traditionally something that you have. And this consists of one-time passwords, tokens, text messages, all of which require access to a physical device and again requires more time and attention of the end user. So this may not be the best solution on smartphones since we typically use these in more frequent periods and also for shorter periods of time. So we have this last category which is probably more suitable for smartphones which is using biometrics that inherently represent something that you are this is easier to key in on smartphones by simply touching a sensor. But unfortunately, we see here that physiological biometrics are vulnerable to replay attacks. In this slide, we see a German researcher successfully lifting the fingerprint from the screen of an iPhone, transferring it to a dummy finger, and thereby bypassing the Apple Touch ID. The same happened in 2017 where BCAB managed to spoof the Apple Face ID using a similar approach. However, the challenge remains the same as physiological biometrics are inherently static inputs, and once they are bypassed, they can be replayed again and again and again. Instead of using one-off physiological biometrics, we could use behavior biometrics, which are provided over time and therefore also allows continuous authentication. We use this method where we first capture sensory data and in this work we're using specifically touch input we use that to then establish a model of the true user which we can then use to evaluate incoming touch input and profile that against our known behavior and then depending on the incoming data the accuracy of the user model and our evaluation we can then decide to unlock or lock our smartphones from all of this and in our work, we focus on two remaining challenges. We look to personalize behavior profiles by considering a target user and their features independent from others. We hypothesize that features should be uniquely selected for each user as all users behave in a unique manner. And we see an example of a single user here on the left with five different behavioral traits. We believe that maybe not all of them are important. Maybe only three, which are marked green, will be important for this particular user, and two may not be important. Other users may find the two red traits important, and the three green ones not so important. And this is what we are looking to identify. We are also looking to identify personal behavior and traits that are stable over time, since users may change the way that they interact with their devices over time and therefore we need to have stability in the selected features. On this slide we present the raw user input from two users that carried out seven different tasks. The data is a subset of the public Touchalytics dataset that was collected by Frank et al. Two users carried out seven different tasks. The first three from the left is recorded in the first week together with the two games which are also collected in the first week. The last two is one article and one game played 
with up to seven days between the first observations. And since we're interested in performance over time, qualifying users from the dataset must provide data over time, and that reduces the original dataset from 41 users to 12 suitable users. Let's look at an example and zoom in on the raw data of a single vertical stroke to observe its anatomy. Here we see how a complete trajectory is actually broken into 28 smaller movements which can be used to compute these behavioral traits. For example, we could evaluate the mean direction of the 28 smaller movements, which in this case are fairly stable. For some users, they may not be stable and therefore not represent their behavior very well. And this is again what we're looking for. We then extract 30 features similar to what Frank et al. extract. We remove feature number 30 because it never changes amongst any of the users that we are looking at. Before we model our users, we also decide to remove long strokes. The red line on the plot shows that proportionally 0.1% of the data has more than 550 points. And we remove these gestures with more than 550 points since they are too long. We also remove gestures with an overly long interstroke time since we're interested in continuous user input. To model each user, we also create an individual binary label set that follows a one versus rest approach. We divide each subset into training and validation, and this allows us a training set for Wikipedia and another for games. Wikipedia mostly consists of vertical behavior where gaming models are mostly horizontal. Also, to allow fair comparison between users, we downsample the training data so every user is trained on the same amount of data. We select the lowest maximum user sample size, which is 30 samples. So on the left-hand side, you see the original data before downsampling, and on the right-hand side, you see after downsampling. And so we therefore have a fair training size for each user prior to our modeling. So to model each user, we take the training data and feed it into our proposed method. This method cross-validates the included or excluded features against optimal hyperparameters for two classification algorithms. We use support vector machines and KNN as that is the most often used in literature. We then evaluate the user model performance by validating with our intercession and interweak test. And we can then compute probabilities based on our trained model and the predicted outcome for, for our intercession and interweak models. As part of the modeling approach, the most important step is the inclusion and exclusion of features. We modify this step using five different feature selection techniques and also test all features for a baseline comparison. The objective is to identify the most relevant features and traits in the context of an individual user. We do that by measuring and optimizing for the greatest area under the curve for each user. Area under the curve ensures that we have an equal error rate between false acceptance and false rejection. We decided to test the mutual information as a filter method, which ranks the shared information between individual feature and the user label, which in our case is the true user or any other user. We also test sequential feature selection, both forward, backwards, and with floating options enabled. And we believe this will capture better the relationship between features. For example, a feature may not be good on its own, but it may be empowering or empowered by other features. For all feature selection techniques, we allow the selector to include or exclude any of the features ranging from 0 to 30 features. Our results show that sequential feature selection and support vector machines outperform other selection methods on average. It also maintains a reasonable confidence interval. This result is based on the game model, 
which mostly consist of horizontal strokes and support the claims of others that this is a easier to predict than vertical behavior. The results are also fairly stable over time, although we see a minor performance loss occurring for all models, as behavior may change a little bit between the inter-session and inter-week results. When we observe the results for reading Wikipedia articles, we come to the same conclusion as others, not as easy to predict as with game models. However, we still see improvements using sequential forward selection and support vector machines is still superior. Now, let's have a look at which features were selected for the models. First, we have the mutual information. It's important to understand here that we did our feature selection for both game models and Wikipedia, but they always came out with the same selected features. Therefore, the charts that you see here is valid both for game and Wikipedia. We can see that there is similarity between the selected features and it clusters around the lower 3, 4, 5 and 6 on both KN and SVM. Sequential forward selection and support vector machines appear to select fewer features than we saw with mutual information. And this may be because features are in iteratively added in a forward fashion, therefore only included if it improves the model performance together with another feature. We also allow the forward selection to roll back and include features that were previously excluded. This did not improve despite the extended and more greedy search. Lastly, we tested sequential backward selection you can read more about these and see the charts in our paper. On this chart we see how often the feature was included amongst all the models. And we ran a total of 60 models and from all of these models we see that feature 27 is included in almost all models. On the other end we see that feature 1 and 22 are rarely included. And this is not to say that these features are not important. They are just not as relevant for these particular users in our experiment. Now returning to the original list of features, we marked in red the features that are included in more than 35 out of all of our 60 models. In the original work by Frank et al, the average velocity, the length of trajectory and the direct end-to-end -end distant features were removed prior to modeling. But we see that this may not be a good approach when we consider individual users. Features 3, 4, 6 are often included and they are screen dependent features. As such, they may not be good to include if you want to share a model between larger screen sizes. Feature 27, the mid-stroke pressure may be a good feature since it represents the strength of a user's muscle and how firm they press on the screen. We also observe from plotting raw data that there may be more interesting features to capture in the beginning and the end of the stroke. To conclude the presentation, we highlight the importance of selecting features independently and personally for each user. We also found that sequential forward selection outperforms the other techniques and that the game models represent more accurate behavior than Wikipedia models. This may be because the game models are created using mostly horizontal data, where the Wikipedia models are created using vertical behavior. We could also see that the game model was able to predict Wikipedia behavior just as well as Wikipedia could predict itself, and this was also valid the other way around. And since we can interchange these models and predict across models, we find that it would be interesting to merge the two models into one and improve the accuracy using perhaps an extended feature scope or by further engineering better and more accurate features. It would also be interesting to evaluate these features in the context of training sizes so, for example, smaller to greater training sizes, as well as the, the impact of selecting different algorithms, such as we did here with KNN and SVM.
Thank you so much for watching the presentation. If you have any questions, feedback, please reach out on email, Twitter, or LinkedIn.